Shalom Kharim, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. This happens to be a prophetic uh, segment, a teaching tonight of our broadcast. Uh, I No doubt, I know this is going to be a blessing to many of you that will be watching tonight. Uh, I do want to remind you, though, before we get started into this message here, uh, we are about to head to Israel, be covering a lot of things that are going on there need your support. We need your help to make this all possible. Everything's taken care of. Tickets have already been purchased, uh, so we are definitely on track to be there, but it is a tremendous undertaking, and we need your help in the preparation along the way, etc. Uh, if you can help us out, you can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. IsraeliNewsLive.org, there's a donation place there. You could help us there. Uh, or, or you can go to IsraelReturns.com, our regular ministry page there. Uh, you can do that by, via mail. That, the, the address has been updated there on uh, our post office box in Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, or, again, uh, either way, you could donate online. We thank you for your kindness, your love for this ministry, and the support for the work that we're trying to do to bring to the people around the world. Also, don't forget, and I'll put a link inside the description box of this message here, sign up, live stream. We're Israeli News Live on live stream. Sign up there. Uh, we've been kicking back off Israeli News Live on our live stream broadcast. Not been doing too much here yet, but we are really going to kick it into high gear in Israel. We want to bring you things as they're breaking on the streets right then and there. So definitely be a part of that. Uh, get involved. Love for to, to be with you there uh, during those times. Uh, tonight, come out of her, my people. Very familiar scripture for many of you guys out of Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I want to go right into this. Uh, Revelation 18, 4, let me just first read this, and then let me explain to you what's on my heart tonight to share with you. Uh, Revelation 18, 4 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Friends, as we are watching, even this weekend, volcano and the ring of fire erupts. I mean, massive eruption on this volcano here. All these volcanoes are active anyway out there in Indonesia. But this one here erupts, sending a huge plume of not only smoke, but lava all the way down the mountain. I mean, when I watched the video footage of this, I was blown away uh, because I, I live in the mountains, so I know what it's like. You know, if you're going to walk from the top of the mountain all the way to the bottom, it's quite a way, it's quite a journey. And then suddenly to see the lava, when it erupts, it goes to the bottom within seconds. We're talking... You know, something that's, I don't know, just looking at it, guesstimating, it's probably five, six miles from the top to the bottom. So imagine within a second or so that lava's to the bottom. I can see why so many people would die. Of course, seven people were killed in that particular uh, explosion there. And then another thing that was really ironic, uh, I, I, an earthquake just happened uh, today near the North Pole. Now that happened last year as well, in or actually in 2014, a 5.2 magnitude. This was a 4.9, I believe it was. And I'm seeing all these things. We know that Yeshua speaks of these things, things that are going to happen, the judgments that are coming. He said, these are the beginning of sorrows, friends. And so tonight, God has laid upon my heart a message that he wants me to lay out there for you guys because I'm trying to get people to wake up and come out of these denominized systems, denominations, etc. This more specifically speaks about the Vatican itself. And I know, friends, it's not an easy message to deliver. God gave me an incredible, incredible message from the book of Jubilees. Uh, we'll be speaking from our own canon, but also from the book of Jubilees. And by the way, the book of Jubilees, uh, it is part of the Russian Orthodox Church's canon, always has been. Uh, it is also part of the Ethiopic and the Syriac Gospels as well. Uh, and it was found in Qumran. Another kind of odd thing, it's actually found in Qumran. So uh, it's believed to be pinned by Moses himself, and it is like a mini version of Genesis. 
Uh, but again, you get some little interesting clues there. We don't always necessarily get, the, but the gist of the story, Abraham, Sarah, and the, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the stories about their lives, uh, very, very similar to the book of Genesis. Uh, but it was definitely, as again, like I said, it was found in, the, in Qumran, uh, in the caves there as part of a biblical scroll. Uh, so I find it very interesting. And what really caught my attention was a very interesting quote here where we find out that the Hebraic language, the Hebraic language was actually considered a dead language by the time Abraham came along. Uh, but God actually refers to it in the book of uh, Jubilees there that it was the language of creation. That's something I did not know. That caught my attention, but as I began to read, I read a whole lot. In fact, I've been reading everywhere today. I was reading in Zechariah. I was reading in uh, Habakkuk. I was reading in the book of Jonah. I was reading in the book of Joel, Zechariah, Zephaniah. Uh, I've just been all over the Bible itself. And at the same time, I decided I wanted to compare the stories of, of Jacob what happened in his life, marrying uh, Rachel and Leah, I wanted to compare it from our canon of Genesis, and I wanted to see some different insights that were there written in the stories of Jubilees. I uh, already knew from the book of Jasher what was written there, but I wanted to just kind of get, get a comparison. And of course, it was nearly the exact same thing. So, But then when I saw what was written in chapter 12 about Abraham, it caused me to realize a message that I needed to share with you and share with those that may tune in, those that are Catholic, not just Catholic friends, but even those that are part of the denominational systems that are going back to Mother Rome, Mother Church there. And remember, I'm not against the people of these churches. I'm not against any of that. I'm against a system of corruption is what I'm against. And God laid it on my heart to share this message with the people tonight that they might wake up and come out of her before it's too late. As it says, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. And friends, when we're seeing the judgments that's falling on the earth today, we know the plagues and judgments that are coming against the sinful religions is at hand. All right, so let's take a look here. Let's go right in. Now, I didn't... I have to hand type it all so I didn't have the time to be able to put everything together for you on the screen, but I highlighted some verses that, that, uh, that I did type out for you because I felt like they were really important that we're going to go into here. Uh, Jubilees chapter 12. Now I'm going to actually read to you though, and I want to start with verse 1. It says, in the sixth week in the seventh year of it, that Abram said to Terah his father, saying, Father, he said, look, here am I, my son, he said. What help and profit have we from those idols which you worship and in the presence of which you bow yourself? For there is no spirit in them. Now, this is Abram talking to his father, right? Talking to his father, Terah. He says, so, you know, there's no life in those idols which you worship and in the presence of which you bow yourself. And my Catholic friends, think about this long and hard. Because it's no different today as it was in the time of Abraham. You know, they claim Christianity, but yet, I mean, my gosh, I take you there and show you. I've got video footage, statues of Mary in Jerusalem and the old city there in, the, in, the, in these the, the different churches that the Catholic Church has and the candles that are being burnt and the bowing and, the, and, the, and the, to the, all the different idols and statues and everything else. I've seen it myself. I videoed it. I have photos of it, etc. And everybody knows it goes on in Catholic churches all over the world, especially here in Europe. There are statues of, uh, of Jesus everywhere. Every, every neighborhood you go into, they have statues of Mary or statues of Jesus there. And, and candles burning all over the place, all over Europe. It is totally nuts. 
but how much statues of the idolatry that is perpetrated by the Catholic Church. But yet there's good people that are part of these systems and they don't realize there's no life in these statues. The life is in Jesus Christ. And he came and he died on that cross in order to impart that eternal life to us. All right, now, so let's look at this, friends. So he says to him, you know, you, which you bow yourself. He says, for there is no spirit in them. They are dumb forms. They, they mislead the heart. Do not worship them. Worship the God of heaven who causes the rain and the dew to, to fall on the earth and does everything on the earth and has created everything by his word. And all life is from his presence. Why do you worship things that have no spirit in them? For they are the work of men's hands and you bear them on your shoulders and you have no help from them, but they are great cause of shame to those who make them and they mislead the heart of those who worship them. Do not worship them. For his, his father said to him, I also know it, my son, but what shall I do with a people who have made me serve them? See, Tara knew that it was wrong, but he says, what do I do? He says, if I tell them the truth, they will kill me because their soul clings to them. So they worship them and honor them. And that's what we run into as well. The more that I try to tell people the truth, the more they want to stone me for it. Now watch what Tara says. He says, keep silent, my son, or they will kill you. In these words, he spoke to his two brothers and they were angry with him and he kept silent. So Abraham ended up having to hold his peace. It's terrible. And it's no different today. I mean, the attacks that come against me are so driven by Catholic insiders, infiltrators, Jesuits, and, and people that, are, that don't even claim that they're Catholic. They'll say, they'll say to your face, no, I'm not Catholic. But watch how they defend the Catholic Church. Watch what they do when they make their videos against me. And when I sit there and say the Vatican is the one that has hidden those things that were in the Dead Sea Scrolls. You know how many proofs they have that Yeshua what he's taught, the things that are about him are in the little fragments that they let get out that they didn't cover up. And you don't think they didn't hide more? They're scholars that worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls that said, yes, they did. Strugnow talks about as well a very interesting uh, entire book. Ended up somewhere in Europe. Nobody will ever get to see that book. Yes, they do. And those that say they didn't, they're just Vatican conspirators that hate, hate me to begin with. Why? Because just like with what Abraham ran into, if you speak against their idolatry system, they'll kill you for it. And if they can't murder me directly, they'll try to assassinate the character that I have. It's funny how people don't come to you, do they? They just talk about you behind your back. That's good godly Christians, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. Anyway, in the 40th Jubilee, in the second week, the seventh year of it, Abram took him a wife, and her name was Sarai, and the daughter of his father, and she became his wife. And Haran, his brother, took him a wife in the third year, in the third week, and she gave birth to a son the 70th year of his week and called his name Lot. Uh, I'm reading this because it's right next to the next part I wanted to read. Nahor, his brother, took himself a wife. In the 60th year of the life of Abram, in other words, when he was 60 years old, that is in the fourth week and the fourth year of it, Abram arose in the night and burnt the house of idols. And he burned all that was in the house, and no man knew it. And they arose and sought to save their gods from the fire Haran haste to save them, but the fire flame, uh, flamed over him, and he was burnt in the fire, and he died in Ur and the Chaldeas before Terah, his father, and they buried him in Ur of the Chaldees. 
Kara went out from Ur and the Chaldees, and he went and his sons to go into the land of Lebanon and into the land of Canaan. And he dwelt in the land of Haran, and Abram dwelt with Terah, his father, in Haran two weeks of years. Now, it's interesting. Abraham himself burnt that house of idols. Now, there is a passage of Scripture. I don't know where it's at, but there is actually a passage of Scripture. Just come to my mind now. Remember it now. That speaks out that Israel themselves will actually destroy the Vatican. But it's using the terminology of Esau. We're talking about the nation of Israel, the judgment that God will bring upon the Vatican. And I believe that that judgment takes place after the death of the two witnesses. Now, before the end of this video here, what I'll do, I'll quickly look after I stop and I'll see if I can't find it. And if I can, I'll make sure that it's part of the video. We'll just cut it in and splice it in at the end there about that. All right. Now, so we see this. Now, Abraham, though, of course, he's just Abram at the time. He begins to seek for God. You get down to verse 17, it says, And a word came into his heart, and he said, All the signs of the stars and the signs of the moon and the sun are all in the hand of the Lord. Who, Why do I search them out? He begins to wonder why he's doing this. He says, he, he desires, he causes it to rain in the morning and the evening. He desires, he withholds it, and things are in his hands. And he prayed in the night and said, My God, God most high, you alone are my God, and you and your dominion have I chosen, and you have created all things, and things that are the work of your hands. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have dominion over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from you, my God, and establish me and my offspring forever, so that we do not go astray from now and forever. What a prayer. Abram, I mean, it's just like today. How many of us really think and pray and ask God, seek God, and say, God, don't let me go astray. There's all kinds of voices in the land today, but don't let me go astray. Not only me, but not even my children or all of my descendants that would come after me. Abram was praying like that. All right, now, he said, shall I return to Ur, the Chaldeas, who are trying to find me? Shall I return to them? Am I to remain here in this place? That the, the right path is before you. Make it prosper in the, in, in the hands of your servant that he may fulfill and I may not walk in deceitfulness of my heart. Oh, my God. You know, it's interesting when he talks about that the, the thoughts of the mind. See how that those evil spirits who have dominion over the thoughts of men's hearts. got to get the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. You've got to become the temple of Almighty God, a temple that is pure and holy before the Lord, that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit can come and dwell within you so that way you don't have to worry about Satan putting all the evil thoughts in your mind. And they don't have to necessarily be evil. They, they, sometimes what people think are evil or, 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 or think is good is not maybe maybe ain't so good after all. Anything that goes against God's word is not good. I can tell you that right now. All right. So now here's what happens though. He stopped speaking and he stopped praying. That's what it says. And then the word of the Lord was sent to him through me, saying, "Get out of your country." I still haven't figured out, by the way, it says sent sent through me. I don't know. I, I'm assuming it's the Holy Spirit speaking to him. You know. Unless it's the angel of the Lord, but anyway, it just says, sent to him through me, saying, Get out of your country and from your kindred and from the house of your father, and go to a land which I show you, and I will make you a great and numerous nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessed blessed in the earth, and you shall shall and shall all families of the earth uh, be blessed, and I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And I will be a God to you and to your son and to your son's son and to your offspring. Fear not now on and all generations of the earth. I am your God. Okay. So it was God speaking to him. I know the answer to that now. The Lord God opened his mouth. Now watch this. The Lord God said, this is what's interesting. 
Open his mouth, that part you have on the screen. Open his mouth and ears that he may hear and speak with his mouth with the language which has been revealed. For it has ceased from the mouths of the children of men from the day of the overthrow of Babel. Now, verse 26, And I opened his mouth and his ears and his lips, and I began to speak with him in Hebrew in the tongue of creation. That blew me away. I had no idea that the Hebraic language was the language of creation. I always thought it was an unknown language. You know, a lot of people speak in tongues and things like that. I can remember years ago, I, I went into one of the, uh, was a, a second, I think it was a second or third vision. I'm not talking about dreams, I'm talking about visions. Because God has dealt me with me in visions from the time that I was 18 years old. I saw my first vision. And that's, you're, you're awake, but you have no control of your physical being because the Spirit of God so takes control of you. And you begin to see things. And when I was about 26 years old, I was in vision and I was literally looking at myself. I was looking, I could see myself. I was communicating with God. And at the time, this in fact, this is right where I began to start studying the Hebrew language. It was right after this. I, I, so I guess I was about 25, 24, maybe 26. I don't, I don't remember exactly how old I was at the time, but I was actually a young man. And this is many, many years ago, uh, well over 20 years ago, I'm in my 50s now. But anyway, I was speaking unto God in a language that I had never, I didn't know the language. Now, whether or not it was Hebrew or not, I don't know. But I could hear, the, I could see myself in the vision. I knew I was, I was conscious, I was conscious. But the spirit, the, the presence of God was so strong that it was like paralyzed and could not move. And when I tried to move, I couldn't do anything because I was just blown away by what was happening. And then suddenly I thought, well, I can still speak. And when I began to try to say, I tried to speak in English, you know, Get a load of this. I tried to say those words, but instead, the very words that I saw myself speaking to the Creator Himself, a different language came from my mouth, and it was the very words that I was speaking to Him there in, in, in some unknown language. Now, whether or not it was Hebrew or not, I don't know. I just started studying the language at that time, or right after that, shortly thereafter. Now, and then I came out of the vision and, and was just, totally blown away by that. But, but anyhow, uh, I, I did not know that the Hebrew language was the language used for the, for the creation itself. And I did not realize that the language had become a dead language since the Tower of Babel. I thought it was still a, a live language through Abraham, but no, God gave it to him supernaturally. And what's interesting, do you know Satan has tried to destroy this language ever since? Even in the time uh, when, when Israel went into captivity in 70 AD, around uh, between the second and, fourth, uh, second and third century there, the language was nearly dying out again because of the uh, Kobaboka uh, a revolt there and then from that point on until modern history the language other than in prayers and stuff in, in synagogues it had nearly died out and of course they were destroying all the Hebrew Bibles and everything even back before then when the Greeks had control of the Israeli land they were trying to force the Greek language on the people and they translated the Bible into the Septuagint language and you couldn't find a Hebrew nowhere practically no wonder why Qumran hid those Hebrew scrolls all right, so it was just fascinating to see that. And then I remembered the scripture too in Zephaniah chapter 3. Uh, let me just read that to you. Um, in Zephaniah, the, prophecy, the prophet says there that God would restore a pure language unto the people that they all might be able to call upon his name. And I, I thought I would have, I don't have that right handy, guys, and I don't want to sit here and hold you up on that. Anyway, Zephaniah chapter 3, I, I think it's around verse 9 or so, where God says that. So see, even the name of, what, what, what people do they call Yahweh? That's not the right way to say His name. No matter how much people try to say they've discovered it, no. God said He will restore a pure language that the people in the days when, when Israel's encamped about by armies. It's getting close to that time. 
All right. But anyway, God and in, in, in he opened up his ears and gave him that language supernaturally. And by the way, the Lord revealed to me that he would do the same with me. The exact same thing. You know, I understand Hebrew not fairly well. Modern Hebrew, so so not fluent at all in modern Hebrew. Biblical Hebrew, I can read it pretty good. And I have a good, uh, 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 how would you call it, a good uh, command of the language as far as in, a, in an academic way, in the studying of that. I took the second year uh, of Hebrew at uh, Pensacola Christian College, not as a, uh, not as a degree course, but uh, I had to take a test with the college, or they wouldn't let me take it unless I, could, I proved that I could actually do Hebrew. By that time, I knew Hebrew fairly well uh, academically and was able to get take the course. I aced it, did very well in it. Also studied at an old pond in Israel. But I've never fully become fluent, and I really went into prayer about this, and the Lord showed me that He would actually give this language to me supernaturally. Had some interesting things to confirm that as well, but I won't go into that. Uh, but anyway, so I, it excited me as well to see God did this with Abraham because I know this is how God is dealing with me as well, to give me the language in a supernatural way because, see, I prayed for the language not just in modern terms, how Hebrew is understood, but I've asked God to understand it all the way back to, to the time of the Paleo-Hebrew and even before the way it was used in ancient times that God would give it to me supernaturally to where I would understand that full depth of the words that were written there that I can sit there and read and understand the, 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 the writings from Qumran at a much greater depth by God's own great mercy. Anyway, no, I don't want to get off. I'm sorry, getting, getting a little sidetracked here. So we see that God said he would do that. Now, again, what fascinates me though is to see that Abraham actually burnt down that place of idols when he was 60 years old. Now, is there a prophetic sign in that? I don't know, but it could be interesting to see. You know, it wasn't too long ago Israel had their 50-year anniversary. Uh, the 60-year anniversary for Israel as a nation is, is fast approaching. I believe it's 2018 will be their 60-year anniversary. Uh, is that going to be when God's going to fulfill that prophecy? And this time it's going to be the plagues that will strike Babylon today, mystery Babylon, that where all the Babylonian gods are of today, very well, very well could be because we're definitely on course for that there. Let's take a look real quick here. Matthew chapter 3, our beloved Savior Yeshua. What does he say? Indeed, I bat or excuse me, John says this. Indeed, I baptize you with water and to repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and with fire. All right, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. See, you want to be that wheat. That chaff is what, is what kind of has held that wheat hidden, but when the wheat comes out, that chaff is really good for nothing, but it looks just like the grain of wheat before. You know, we've actually farmed wheat when I was younger. Uh, we did farm wheat, and a chaff looks just like the actual grain of wheat, similar to it, that is, not exactly, but similar to it, you know, but when that thing, when you take it and you go to thresh it on the threshing floor there, you're beating that wheat, if you do it by hand the old-fashioned way, you're just smashing that wheat down on the floor, and the grains come busting out of there. Well, all that chaff and everything is burned, you know, as, as far as it doesn't have to be, you know, we fed it to the cows and stuff too, but... You know, the thing is, is that's what he'll do. He's going to burn it with unquenchable fire. See, and that's those that resemble Christianity, but they're not the true version of it. And see, back in the days of Abraham, back when he was there with his father, they were all worshiping all these idols and everything, just like people are doing today. They're worshiping a bunch of idols and not the true and living Savior, Yeshua. Brother, sister, we got, to, we got to have our eyes on Him. We don't need our eyes on the things of the world, nor the things of the church, nor the statues and idols and everything else. All right, now, looky here. Notice also in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. 
For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill His will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast and to the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. My gosh, friends. Who reigns over the kings of the earth? It's the Vatican. Does not every leader of the world go to the Pope of Rome? I mean, he runs the show. Oh, gosh. And now, don't get me wrong, guys. I, I realize the United States plays a part in there as well. To me, she's the daughter of Babylon. And she's got her own judgment coming as well in the very near future. But mystery Babylon, altogether different here. Mystery Babylon, that is Rome itself. Notice also, and shall eat her flesh. Now, that sounds more like cannibalism, but you know what it kind of reminds me of too? Now, I don't know if this is exactly right. I just kind of throw this out there. You know, when Yeshua, when he took and he said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And they did explain what he was talking about until his disciples got along with him and, and he said to them what he meant. And he's, he's talking about the communion. I wonder if this isn't a representation of their communion, their sun god wafers that they worship the sun god is that what that could that be a reference to that and shall eat her flesh that's just something to think about very interesting anyway i trust that what you've heard tonight has been a blessing to you it certainly was a blessing to me and i cannot encourage you enough if you're part of these systems my jewish brethren especially that have been getting caught up with Rome. Shimon Perez, I've spoke hard against you for the covenant that you made with the Vatican. Prime Minister Netanyahu as well. I speak to you, my brother. I speak to all of those of, of Israel and the government that's been making these covenants with Rome. Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins and her plagues. Do you not realize God will bring judgment on her? Just as Abraham burned that house of idols all those many, many years ago, God is going to burn the house of idols in the day that we're living in now. My brother, sister, come out of her and don't be any partaker of any of these sins or plagues that are going to come upon her. And the two witnesses will bring upon her those plagues. It's coming. It's coming. It's very near at hand, friends. Very near at hand. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic insight of our broadcast this evening. Again, don't forget, we need your help in this ministry here. Consider giving as the Lord lays it upon your heart, IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. If you prefer to go by check by mail, you can do that uh, to our address in the Czech Republic. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.